Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next session, um, which is hosted by the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Before I hand over to our moderator and speakers, I would like to briefly remind you of the Code of Conduct, which you will see in a second um, on my screen, hopefully. Just give me a minute. Um, yes. Sorry for the delay. So here it is now. Um, as you have probably heard, if you have joined a session before, um, we will, so the session hosts in every studio, uh, will briefly remind you um, at the start of every session of those rules to follow, just a brief introduction. Um, I'm Elisabeth Schaumann, I'm the studio host here in Berlin. I'm here with my colleague Theodora, who is taking the role of remote moderator help and for all of you who are here in the Zoom room, uh, please change your name if you haven't done so already to your full name. Um, you can change that yourself. If you have troubles, please message me or Theodora so we can assist you. Um, when, to, when you want to ask a question or make a comment, please raise your hand uh, so that we can give you the floor. After being given the floor, please state your full name turn on your camera if possible, and then ask a question or make your statement. Um, and you can make your contributions also in written form to the chat and the forum. Um, so the one last thing that I wanted to remind you of is this is a session only for registered participants. So in the Zoom room, um, please don't share the link to anyone outside. Um, so we keep this safe. If anyone uh, continues to fail to comply with these rules, we might kick them out as a very last resort. We hope that we don't have to do this and we can all have, um, um, we can come together to have a productive, informative and interactive session. And with that, I would like to hand over to Mary, who is moderating the session today. Um, I wish you all a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this pre-event hosted by the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, Dynamic Coalition for Simply YCIG. Uh, my name is Mary Babasadian. I'm the steering committee member for the Eastern European um, Regional Group with YCIG. And today I have the honor to be moderating this pre-event. As a short overview of today's session, um, I would like to highlight that we are going to discuss three interconnected and important um, issues, uh, namely youth participation in internet governance, national youth IGF uh, movements, and the way forward regarding creating synergies and working on community capacity building. Today, we are pleased to have with us a lineup of wonderful speakers representing different initiatives and organizations. Namely, uh, we have with us Elizabeth Schauerman, uh, representing um, UTIC and Youth IGF Summit 2019. Nika Basoliani, representing Advisory Council on Youth of Council of Europe. Veronica Birindelli from Youth IGF Italy. João Pedro Martins, uh, representing LUSA from Youth IGF. Noah Ashraf, representing YCIG Steering Committee. And Elmur Karimov, uh, Regional Engagement Director of Eastern European Group from uh, Youth Observatory or ISOX uh, Youth Special Interest Group. Also taking this opportunity, I would like to thank the team behind this session for all of their efforts and contributions. So taking the advantage of hosting a pre-event at uh, Eurodic, we at YCIG would like to bring in the discussion uh, where it was left off at our last session, namely at the YCIG session at IGF 2019 in Berlin. 
Without further ado, I'd like to invite two of our speakers to initiate a discussion on effective youth participation in internet governance. And I would like to give the floor uh, to Elizabeth to have a look back and reflect on the first ever global youth IGF summit that happened last year in Berlin and uh, all the initiatives and developments that happened after it. So without further ado, Elizabeth, you may have the floor. Thank you very much. I had to skip through a few slides. I'm sorry, Mary. Um, so as was just mentioned, uh, me and my team were uh, busy last year planning for the uh, Youth ITF Summit in Berlin, which was graciously supported by uh, the ITF host, the, the Ministry of Economic Affairs here in Germany and other partners as well. And before I briefly explain how we set this up, I would like to show you um, a quick recap of about a minute, just a few pictures um, in a video to see how it was on site. I hope the screen sharing works all right. If you have troubles with the sound uh, and it's, it comes out at your end really badly, um, I'm very sorry. You might just turn up your sound for a minute and then we can go back in when it's done, but I hope most of you can hear us fine. Okay. Es ist so der Vibe im Raum, also es ist eine ziemlich gute Atmosphäre. Ich habe unfassbare, intelligente, nette, zuvorkommende Menschen kennengelernt und ich glaube wirklich, dass das eine Gelegenheit ist, um, um ja, etablierte Meinungen wirklich zu hinterfragen und neue Fragen aufzuwerfen. The most impressive thing that happened so far is the fact that all these more than 100 young people coming from all over the places representing different sort of organizations, representing their own interests as well, decided to work together and to build this message that would go from the Youth Summit to the other participants of the IGF World. All right, I hope you could hear that all right. So what you saw here was really just the tip of the iceberg, which means um, we could gather a, a, a big number of young people in Berlin actually to, as a pre-event, so to speak, to the global IGF, we had a day to come together and uh, work on the youth messages that were then presented to the Internet Governance Forum, mainly by the participants themselves, so those people who drafted the messages and worked on them collaboratively. But the work did not start there. In fact, we um, during the summer, we had an open call for participation in which uh, almost 400 people um, came to us and, and expressed their interest to participate in such a thing. And from that, we could select a large number, about 120 that we then invited to participate in a series of webinars. Those webinars were very much focused on um, the, the core issues of the IGF that year. As you know, uh, the IGF MAG every year um, defines the, the thematic tracks and we kind of catered to that and also um, took youth participation or effective youth participation as, our, as one of our core topics as well, because even though that's a bit of a meta topic, we thought it would be worthwhile to discuss how we as young people can effectively bring the advocacy that we want to the places 
on a local, regional and global level um, that we can access. So um, in this very decentralized way, we could um, exchange and then also gather inputs and statements on our key topics and those were actually the basis for the for the messages that were condensed and worked on by the uh, more or less 100 people who were in berlin in november last year and then we all went into the igf together and had many opportunities to present those messages to key stakeholders in uh, in the sessions themselves and um, I think it was seen by many as a, as a good initiative to institutionalize or at least bring youth as one uh, initiative together, because we all know there's different um, groups working, some of them regionally, some of them globally, they're all doing great work, but it is, uh, it, so our rationale was that it makes sense for the global IGF to bring them all together and see where we overlap and where all of our work can coalesce into um, the key messages that were then um, figured out and, and presented. We have done a report after, so um, I can later post to the chat the, the links to the information that is on the that was done on the Youth IGF Summit 2019. So from different perspectives a success and I was very happy that I could um, facilitate that format but um, I think it is also good for us that we look a bit ahead and what came of it because it's now sometimes referred to as um, by the Polish hosts of the next IGF they actually reached out to us and asked how they could bring the lessons learned from the Youth IGF Summit into the IGF 2020. And they have really also made youth participation a focus. Um, they've all already held a webinar and they are trying to figure out different formats on site. If we can hopefully meet on site in November in Katowice, how to really get the exchange going between young people and decision makers. So they put a lot of thought into that and I'm happy to see that this was one rather um, tangible outcome also of, of the things we did in 2019. And I think, I mean, we all know that this is a, a, a process rather than several events. So um, I think it, it gave us a good opportunity to work together. And I see this actually now in the past few months um, and also in this session that the need for creating synergies and, and working together is something that we can all agree on. And this is what I mean by the second point. So um, apart from just being present at different events, there is going on a lot of exchange and a lot of activity, which I find amazing. And I am always here to support uh, in every way that I can. Um, I think there's sometimes a bit of an idea that this might be fragmentation or that different uh, parallel work streams don't actually go together that well or maybe uh, in like in more of a, a situation that doesn't coalesce so well. I mean I think from my perspective and I'm not active in all the work streams obviously but I think we should always aim for um, working together where we can instead of doing the same thing over and over again, which then actually fragments the things we want to bring to the table, because this is, I think, sometimes or traditionally, this has been brought forward that youth doesn't really have a unified voice and that we um, need to organize better. And I think this is happening, but um, there is always room to improve. And my last point that I want to make is um, also because now we are setting up the, the whole Eurodic studio and we have had so many um, people registering that wouldn't be able to come to an on-site event and would be then excluded. So I think from my point of view, working with young people where uh, funding is always a huge problem, um, this is actually not so bad. I mean, I don't want to make light of the situation, not at all. And I hope you're all safe and healthy. And um, But 
bringing this more online and having virtual exchanges also on a very high level actually gives us more of an opportunity to be there as well, even if we could not travel. So those were just my few points that I wanted to make. I'm really looking forward to discussion and happy to receive your questions and statements. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, I would very much agree with your point that this is a process for sure. We have made uh, the first steps uh, of working together rather than just duplicating the efforts. And another thing I would like to highlight to our uh, speakers and the audience is that, uh, of course, uh, IGF is just, uh, if you think about it, it, it happens once a year for a week, let's say, but everything is happening intersessionally. So it is important to remember that it is not about that one week every year, but it is the work that is done throughout the year. Uh, and taking up on your last point with COVID-19, I think uh, this session would not avoid this topic uh, that this pandemic, of course, affected everyone on the globe one way or the other. So I would like to invite Nika, who is member of the Advisory Council on Youth of the Council of Europe and also member of the COVID-19 Task Force of the Council, uh, to share his perspective of the new challenges and opportunities in view of the pandemic, uh, especially from the capacity development um, and the capacity building perspective. You have the floor, Nika. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mary. My great honor to be here and uh, my great pleasure as well. Um, you, you forgot to mention that the task force is actually for Joint Council on Youth, which means it, com it is comprised uh, by young people and also people who are uh, involved or, or are responsible for youth policies in their respective countries. So it's like governmental workers and young people together uh, working for amid the crisis. And I think that's a, a very good point also to make. But before we think about or start speaking about uh, COVID-19 and it's the challenges that it has brought upon us, I think it's also very good to look back on what kind of challenges we, do we have for youth participation. Uh, and I've been participating in internet governance platforms for three years already. And I've always had the feeling that it's, uh, we need to get things straight about youth participation. Uh, we also see the, in, in many uh, internet governance uh, dialogues or, or forums or discourses with the term meaningful entered, meaningful participation. I think this means that maybe participation is not understood uh, in a way that makes us feel that this is a meaningful participation, right? So that there's a lot of not meaningful going on as well. And uh, to, to, to get things straight, uh, we, when, when we think about participation, we think about making decisions, uh, that young people have the right to make the decision. And uh, I think that that might mislead us because young, uh, uh, youth participation is not only about decision making, but it's also about having rights to participate. Uh, it's also about uh, having the means, space, and the opportunity and where necessary to the support to participate and influence decisions or engage in the actions uh, for, for, for the society, which are relevant for the society. Uh, so it's not only uh, making decisions, but also having some kind of support or resources to actually participate. And uh, youth participation is actually a policy principle. It's, it's a chaperone, which has to anchor every kind of policy in, in, uh, in the public, every kind of public policy. Uh, and it should em embrace various areas and dimensions. Um, and I think to start uh, dealing about youth participation, I think we need to identify that power holders here are the duty bearers. Uh, and then, Young people here are right holders. So this is a very principle that we need. Where, where does young youth participation happen? It happens in the policy making, which includes agenda setting. It includes policy formulation, policy implementation, policy evaluation, and definitely, I, I think internet governance platforms, including uh, Eurodig, is a very wonderful um, opportunity to steer discourse and uh, set the agenda. It also happens in established democracies like voting, protests, 
or recalling citizen initiatives, getting elected, participating in political space. We also have civil space for youth, which is uh, organized or no longer organized young people or volunteering or union and so on. Um, and then what we experience nowadays is a shrinking space, which, uh, which is another big topic as, and so on. The, I think in, in, uh, to, to think about youth participation, it's very important to admit that we have the, the, uh, the duty bearers, which means power holders have two kinds of obligations, which is a negative obligation that uh, young people's uh, rights to express or right to assemble or to vote is uh, safeguarded or they have the, uh, or, or there's no discrimination uh, and then they also have positive obligations, which means that uh, the power holder should empower young people. They should uh, give some resources or um, uh, arrange the environmental factors in a way that young people can engage meaningfully and participate meaningfully. So also to uh, um, uh, accomplish or safeguard peace and security, et cetera, et cetera. So it's also very important to uh, feed the ecosystem in a way that young people are able to have some kind of agency, that they are able to make some kind of meaningful interventions. And it's, don't forget, it's not only young people uh, as a homogeneous um, group of society, but it's like young people represented in many different levels from actually different groups of young people as well, would, whether it would be a marginalized group or non-marginalized and so on. And it's, uh, it's something that I, I, I came out came across with and uh, actually surprised me uh, is actually letter and uh, letter of participation. And well, I, I'm pretty sure you have all heard about it, and it's uh, by Roger Hart. But actually, before Roger Hart's letter of participation was developed by Arnstein in 1960s, a very interesting period in uh, in the history. Uh, a lot of uprising, a lot of activism. So I think it's uh, it was very to the point. And it diff differs participation or non-participation in three different groups. One is uh, non-participation, which is manipulation or therapy, where, where young people are treated as a problem. So we have to treat the pro problem. Then we have uh, tokenism. So still not participation. Tokenism, in w where we have young people being informed, or they are uh, consulted, or they are placated, which means that they are excluded from the power base. And young people are there. They can vote, but they will never have a power. They will never have a power base to make some, any kind of, um, there's no assurance for, that they will uh, actually affect the decision making. And then you have participation, which can be partnership, which can be citizen control, which, which can be de de delegation of power and so on. And when we speak about COVID-19, all these disparities, all these challenges are ex exacerbated. Um, well, young people are, of course, directly affected by health, and so so are any other groups. But marginalized groups are, uh, they find themselves even more excluded than they were before. Or uh, youth arg organizations are actually the first ones to be defunded. Um, or even governmental departments or agencies who are responsible for youth policies, they, they also experience some kind of defunding uh, right now. So young people are, well, youth policy is the most vulnerable towards the economic crisis. And then of course the economic, global econ economic crisis, which is lo looming upon us is a big challenge for participation as well. We, because we already discussed, right? Participation uh, needs resources. It's, uh, it's not that like you will enable, you will uh, give the right to young people and they will come and participate. No, they need some kind of support and resources to participate as well. Um, but I think crisis can also bring some kind of opportunity. And uh, perhaps we can find some resolutions here. Perhaps we can push the restart button and reboot or rethink the youth participation or uh, especially in, in su such an uh, interesting topic like uh, internet governance. It's not only interesting, but it's a, it's a vital thing, right? And uh, we, we already see that people already started some kind of uh, reboot in, uh, in, in their mind. And I'm, I'm not sure if, you, if it, this is due to circumstances of the pandemic or a curfew or some kind of uh, post-traumatic effect, but um, 
and, and as history has shown, crisis can bring some kind of resolutions. Um, well, what we found in, uh, in, in the, the task force of the Joint Council on Youth is that there has been a lot of deeds by young people during the pandemic. And uh, actually a lot of deeds include digital work. Um, young people have organized hackathons uh, about COVID-19 to find resolutions uh, or uh, for, for the problems that uh, the new problems that we found in each other uh, or, or they came up with uh, some kind of policy solutions uh, or, or they are there to uh, help those who need uh, like the elderly or, or raise up the topics of marginalized people. So I like to bring it to the public discourse. So we also see that um, actually this crisis can actually start some kind of uh, different kind of thinking uh, uh, in, in, in the society. Um, I believe that uh, it's very important that we also support the grassroots and the bottom-up approach, especially in internet governance, because internet governance is something, it's not like, you know, uh, what parliament does or, or government does. It's, it's not, internet is another kind of uh, sovereign uh, country or, or, or space, right? So it's the governance happens in a, in a, in a very different way here. And I think uh, uh, to ensure youth participation in this uh, um, very free and uh, liberal uh, space, we need to uh, really take a look at the bottom-up approaches and grassroots support and uh, to ensure that young people have agency on every level or uh, on every areas of internet governance or any sector that is affect uh, affecting the internet governance. And uh, that would be it from me. I hope that I fit in my time constraints. If I didn't, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sorry for that. It, it was fine, no worries. Uh, thank you so much, Nika. Uh, yes, I think uh, it is very important to mention that we need to start from the beginning in a way and starting by understanding what youth participation actually means to be able to participate meaningfully and also effectively. And I think this is something uh, all the youth involved in different uh, aspects and initiatives on internet governance goes through at some point because um, youth has many heads and understanding what actually youth participation means is not so straightforward as it might appear. And I very much support um, uh, your um, uh, statement that youth has a lot to bring to the table and we need to be there. Uh, not only physically, but also we need to be to have the sources, the opportunities, uh, and the space uh, to to be there and to contribute. Um, and I think it goes without saying that the part youth participation is crucial on all levels, as it was also highlighted by Nika. And now, going from global to local, I would like to focus our discussion on the topic of uh, national youth IGF movements. And uh, I'd like to invite Joao and Veronica to share their experience on organizing national youth IGFs in Italy and Portugal and um, assess uh, the impact of these initiatives. So, so Joao and um, Veronica, you have the floor. Thank you very cool. much, Mary. Cool. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So, Elizabeth or Mary, the next slide, please. So hi everyone, once again, my name is João Pedro. Um, we'll make it into a bit of a conversation here. I'm sorry that we couldn't bring everyone on the table on this conversation, but at least it won't be uh, just me talking to the camera. I'll have Veronica on the other side, I have Veronica. Uh, and uh, I'm part of the Youth IGF um, Portugal, uh, part of the Lusophone chapter, actually, from the Youth IGF movement. And uh, Veronica, go ahead, present yourself, maybe. So, hi, everybody. I am Veronica Birindelli, and I'm from the Youth IGF in Italy, um, Youth IGF Initiative in Italy. And uh, we are a fairly young initiative because we were recognized uh, a year ago 
in the summer of 2019. And uh, it all started with somehow an adventure of myself because I came to know internet governance through an internship and I got very excited about it, very passionate. So I decided to start uh, a youth initiative. So it was very, it was a bit different from what uh, Joao actually told me on how his initiative started, so. Yeah, it's great. So we have a couple of points here to go through. Uh, we stated those questions uh, that we'll try to answer hopefully on this conversation. Uh, first, we'll talk about a little bit of how to start the National Youth IGF Initiative. And then uh, we'll go through how to reach to stakeholders and eventually have what we want to uh, and build a community. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll start Veronica and uh, say that from my end, starting the chapter uh, was pretty much straightforward. So I got the, the invitation uh, from the Youth IGF movement to uh, conduct some kind of representation at the national level. Uh, later, uh, the, the idea grew a little bit because uh, when we were thinking about the concept of community, uh, we also thought that it would be interesting to bring, um, since Portugal is not that big of a country, more people and uh, considering uh, extra uh, countries and nations that also speak Portuguese. But Veronica, how was your end and how, how did you start your national youth IGF? So our um, initiative was uh, somehow um, more um, grassroots because it was uh, started uh, mostly by, by myself and then with the end of some people in the national uh, IGF that also were very passionate in involving young people that helped me to reach a few people. And so we started to work on how to, uh, to meet the requirements that are needed to start your own Na uh, national initiative, uh, youth national initiative. So at the beginning, we were just three people coming from three different stakeholders as per requirement, which was the program committee. And uh, and then we had we built you know our website and our mailing list to reach the community and ensure that our community will be bottom up and uh, and multi stakeholder, open and and inclusive. And uh, so we, we slowly started uh, trying to, to reach out and to make our community grow. And uh, so this is how everything started. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting because from my end, so uh, the Youth IGF movement was already um, acknowledged by the United Nations. So uh, in a sense, I got my um, the job a little bit easier. Um, of course, we also uh, got some uh, the website in place, and uh, we are now a big community. But uh, I'm curious, Veronica, of uh, how in Italy was reaching out to stakeholders, because from our previous conversation, um, we we had really different approaches, and this is really inter interesting. And uh, uh, before talking to you, I didn't have the idea that. Um, well, two, two initiatives could have been brought up so differently and actually work uh, so, so well. So uh, how to reach to stakeholders from your perspective? Well, first of all, one advice I would give is to reach to your national initiative because they, of course, are a great place to start reaching out to different stakeholders, to people who know about internet governance. But then I think that also one of the goals is to go beyond that and to try to be as much as inclusive as possible. So one thing, of course, uh, it could be um, bettering your presence on social media, because through social media, you, of course, you have great tools and opportunities to reach young people and inform them. Because I think that one of the greatest challenges about internet governance is that people are not aware of such topics of such issues, they don't really know what it is. So it's hard to go to your community and ask them for input if they don't know what are you asking them about. And um, another thing that I think it's crucial is also uh, reaching out to universities and students associations, because thanks to the work working with professors um, and uh, also universities, maybe everywhere on your country, you can ensure to have this broader coverage. And um, 
And so I think those are uh, the three main uh, things that one should consider if, if one wants to reach all the possible stakeholders. And also because in university you have students coming from many different backgrounds, from political science, for example, to computer science. So you, 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 you really have, are sure to broaden your multi-stakeholderism. Cool. Cool. Uh, actually, uh, and yet again, on a different perspective, um, building up on, onto the stakeholder approach, uh, I actually took a, a very different, um, a, a very different approach. So I looked for the most important or the most uh, uh, broad um, institutions here in Portugal, and uh, identified the ones that I would easily get access to young people. So. Uh, the idea was to build fast uh, uh, a network of uh, both access to young people, but also resources in terms of uh, what I could uh, do or what I could build um, here in Portugal. And my, my first um, institution was the Ministry of Education. So I have already connections there due to um, my involvement in other projects, but Mainly, uh, the idea was to identify some key issues that, uh, for instance, the no hate speech campaign and uh, other campaigns that are actually going through here in Portugal uh, might be might bring up to the conversation and what could um, the youth IGF bring to the table? Because uh, as you mentioned, it's it's a little bit true. I mean, uh, we uh, in a developed country, if, if, I, may, if I, I can put it that way, we don't see a lot of conversation here in the, uh, what is internet governance, because usually our rights are taken for granted. And uh, building up a little bit on the conversation, it's a little bit difficult, uh, yes. And I think that also brings us to the third topic and how, how should we build a community? Because as, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, the idea is to uh, have things together uh, or have things in common and building at the national level means that we have to look really close to what uh, actually defines us. So in terms of materials, that's, that's really something that you want to do, for instance, in Portuguese, uh, at your own language, for instance, and we produce a lot of, uh, a lot of messages uh, we translate a lot of content and uh, bringing it in Portuguese, it's a really cool uh, feature. I know that, for instance, in another Portuguese speaking countries, that's, that's even more of an, um, an issue and uh, is really relevant to bring the content uh, in, in, in Portuguese. And then another thing when we think about a community is, not, is uh, trying to avoid this silo situation. Because as you mentioned, and I think it's really important, uh, getting back to universities, uh, all the universities, universities is a key issue here. Because you might see, and it happened actually, um, when I was trying to see who was in, already involved in Portugal in internet governance, uh, that a, a small group uh, from the inner, um, the countryside of Portugal was already having these discussions, but at, at the closed door. So, the idea was to try to come in, uh, meet the people, meet already some interesting ideas that they have, but also try to uh, bring those discussions out and uh, making sure that the conclusions that were being drawn out there were also part of a broader uh, community, of a, a broader idea and youth representation. What do you think about it? Well, I think that um, certainly uh, one of the key aspects also in, in starting an initiative is, is the international dimension. Because um, I think that, I believe that internet governance is, is, is one of the prime examples of, of policies that do not have an impact only on a single country, but globally. So uh, I think we're, since we're somehow all facing similar issues and uh, uh, Somehow we're all different, but we share also many similarities. I think that a collaboration that is somehow peer-to-peer -peer between youth initiatives is great because that could help 
sharing more ideas, but also sharing more best practices, for example, on how to best build a community. So I think it, it would be great and, and, and very important to foster this collaboration between the, between the initiatives. For example, one thing that we're doing to engage our community and to make it stronger is to organize small events that are single issues, but this way we can raise awareness. And uh, I think that, that uh, this would be a great example in which different initiatives could share materials and insights and analysis, maybe a PowerPoint presentation that you're using to explain how the internet works uh, could be used by another initiative. And this is just a, a small example. So I, I agree with you when, when you say that sharing and not creating silos and making sure that we all collaborate and network together. I, I really agree with you because I really think it's paramount. I mean, and we can also bring the conversation a little bit back actually to what I was being saying by Nika. I mean, uh, when we think about participation, we can see it at so different levels and uh, for now, we kind of took uh, the approach at the higher level of uh, internet governance engagement from the perspective of education and uh, trying to uh, educate people on how to participate and whatsoever, but also we can see it at different levels. For instance, even bringing the topic and presenting it to people that uh, and to young people that haven't thought about the problem is is perhaps a start a starting and. For instance, it was an uh, initiative that um, I actually developed here in uh, in Portugal uh, with the the Azorian government, which which is uh, an archipelago from Portugal. Uh, I did the full nine islands and went there and speak to young people about the problem. I mean, uh, it was more topic for, more related to uh, online safety and children online safety but still was a nice example of how can we engage and uh, uh, make sure that even young people that are, are not at the discussion tables, like uh, many of us have the opportunity to, uh, to be, uh, how, how are we are still making the message going up and down on this chain of communication. That, that, that was an important point that uh, I wanted to make. But I think that you're also, um, bringing up on, on something important, and Mary is raising me a signal there. Uh, I think that we are on 13, conver 13 minutes conversation. I don't know if that's, that's okay, but we'll, we'll share a little bit of a notion, finally notion that, that was how to uh, kickstart the next, the next point on the agenda, because Veronica was telling and talking about how to break silos. And we're bringing the conversation into making it not only the national silos, but also this more broader um, uh, scope um, initiatives that perhaps are making the same, uh, same uh, materials, running the same campaigns, and we need to think outside the box and try to stop uh, to perhaps not, not copy each other, but in the end, it's double effort that we, we could easily avoid. And I totally agree with you, Veronica, when you say that uh, we need a facilitator for coordination. And this could be maybe at the UN level um, and the, providing the cooperation that you also see it as a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Because once we have a gallery of contacts to come up and uh, see, it, see it as a centralized hub of connection, you can then create these synergies that, for instance, Portugal working with Italy would be great, and we have already the connection, and we'll sure do something with it. Thank you so much. I think this is a topic for a whole big session, uh, but it was uh, we just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, you know hear your stories and uh, compare the cases of two countries. Um, and actually, we have a couple of questions that were sent to me, uh, so I'll just voice them. So how many countries are left without the youth IGF? Um, the person, um, sorry, I didn't introduce them. So it's Gil from Netherlands. And uh, the question is, I would like to know who are missing and what we can do to get them involved. If the speakers know, so either one of you would like to answer or if any other speaker would like to answer, the floor is open. 
So I don't know the exact number, but I think they're still not not enough because uh, I, I believe they're just a, a few, maybe 10, 15, or not above 20. I, I should go to the list, but definitely much, much less than the national. And I think one thing we could do is go to advocate to the national initiatives to see if they can foster some action that actually leads to building a youth initiative in their own countries. I don't know if someone else has some input on this. Yeah, well, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, give a little bit of more, uh, more of a detail. So the list of actually uh, the actual initiatives is uh, present at the uh, uh, IGF um, website. And I can speak for the youth IGF movement so it's it's a broader um, idea with chapters, and it it brings thirty five countries to the table. But besides, uh, who are the countries that are already have a youth initiative or not? And I think that everybody who wants to get involved should first uh, check if there's already a movement, but then uh, try to get, start to to engage in somehow. The first the first advice that I would give is. Uh, speaking to the national uh, IGF initiative, uh, the, the broader one, and see how um, the youth IGF movement could be a plus into that setting. Because again, uh, the silos that we are, we're discussing, it, they, they could be on uh, either parallel youth initiatives, but it can also be in a, at a broader scope. And for instance, being talking the same things that are discussing at the I, IGF uh, national level, but not bringing the messages there and not being heard. Yeah, I also wanted to speak on, I mean, we can, sure, we could count the, the national regional youth initiatives. And actually, I mean, the, the UN um, IGF website is a place for that. So all the recognized youth initiatives are listed there. Uh, and Anja Gengo, for all of you who have been in touch with her, she is actually um, in the role of being kind of a, central point for all of us to report to and she can easily also um, give us the opportunity to to exchange there is um, to, after the webinar that the that the Polish hosts have set up there was an, an extra um, mailing list created so there is opportunities also I think um, what has been said is true. If there is a national initiative, so an NRI in your country or your region, it definitely makes sense to reach out to them and see if you can get support. But there's also many countries where that's not an option or there is no active initiative. So um, I think there is an opportunity to be active, especially online and in a decentralized way that is uh, more accessible than um, too many than maybe other forms of, of meeting and uh, doing things at an IGF. So um, I just wanted to comment on that. So there is different options. Once you have a group of people who work on this and you fulfill the, the criteria for openness and um, then you can just reach out to, to the UN and seek a recognition as an initiative and it gives you access to like a bit more of a platform and maybe also the opportunity to reach out to, to more people in your, in your region or your country. Thank you so much, very important points. Uh, I would like to go next to our question from Deborah. It is a question for both Veronica and Joao. And the question is, what has been your biggest achievement during this time at the UGF? Sorry, could you go uh, go again? And uh, uh, it's just a sec if it was during this COVID time or is it during the uh, whole uh, period of, I, I didn't got that one. It's more general, I think. But if Deborah wants to clarify that, I think it's more general because she didn't mention anything about COVID. Okay. Uh, Veronica, want to go ahead or I, I can go uh, and... Uh... Um, so um, I think that, of course, one of the biggest achievements for us was getting recognized at the beginning in 2019. And then uh, we still haven't uh, organized um, uh, an annual meeting. But what we did was a few of, of small events uh, that were meant to engage the, the young people. 
And so we actually, with these events, we, we, we had people who previously knew nothing about internet governance writing to us, asking to get involved. So I think that was, you know, a start of, of something new, <laughs> but uh, something that it means that young people are really interested and really believe that these topics are important and they want to get, engaged, to get involved in this. So from my end, uh, actually, um, most interesting things that I can report so far are uh, we have a, a very cool um, Facebook page where we have 15,000 um, uh, subscribers, which is really good when it comes to um, disseminate content and share materials with others. So making sure that the messages are, are reaching out there, which is good. But also um, the, the, the idea or the initiative that I was uh, referring earlier, um, it was perhaps one of the biggest um, initiatives uh, that, that, that the IGF Portugal um, created, which was uh, creating a awareness campaign uh, at the regional level, uh, reaching out to more than 5,000 uh, st students, which is really great. And, um, shows the power of uh, both cooperation with other stakeholders, um, but also the importance that this topic should have uh, uh, when it comes to uh, youth and uh, the youth perspective. Thank you so much. And the next question is uh, from Alison. And uh, the question is how to encourage and engage uh, youth from authoritarian countries uh, which deprives citizens, not only youth of civil rights, to participate in internet governance. It, it is to uh, any one of the speakers, if you also feel free to answer this. I'll go with a small statement. Uh, it's definitely um, a tough question. And uh, we are privileged to enough to be able to share our own ideas and share our own uh, opinions freely and thank God for that. But uh, the idea here uh, or what I would advise is to not not to uh, perhaps go ahead and speak out uh, at the national level, but take advantage of many international initiatives uh, where the place for you to be heard is there and making sure that the ideas that you convey um, are in, into the 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 better perspective of internet things because when you feel, when you speak clearly and you speak freely about uh, positive content about the internet at an international level there's no one who could uh, make something to make you less hurt or less important thank you joao anyone else would like to take this tough question yes yeah, I, I, can I go next thank you mary um, I think we are not uh, in the position uh, to, to tell something to the young people uh, in, authoritarian, in authoritarian states, but we are in the uh, position to uh, hold, hold duty bearers accountable, the ones who actually have the power, you know, the, the big guys of the internet, I'm pretty sure, you know. Um, so we can hold them accountable and make sure that internet is not uh, an instrument to abuse, to be abused, or uh, it's not an instrument against human rights, but it's an uh, instrument to foster human rights. I think this is pretty much something that uh, we can do. Um, but, well, uh, authoritarian or non-authoritarian countries, I think we all have problems with human rights and internet can actually be uh, backfire uh, towards human rights in some cases. Um, it's very um much discussed nowadays so uh, i think in any ways uh this is something that we can do uh that uh, we hold the big guys of the internet the power holders the duty bearers accountable thank you so much nika uh, anyone else would like to take the floor i know it is a tough one <laughs> I don't think there is like a solution that we can propose now, but all the points that were voiced are really valid for sure. And uh, I would also like to remind our participants uh, if 
they have any questions, please. Yes, we have Alicia who raised her hand. Can we unmute her? Or can I unmute her? Yes, I can. Three. Okay. Alicia. Hello to everyone. I'm Alessia Ciccarello. I'm a member of the Internet Society Italian chapter. Uh, I have a question and then I have to say something if uh, it's not a problem. Uh, for those uh, who participate uh, in YOT and EGF and uh, in the global EGF, uh, what is the difference in terms of the impact that uh, young people uh, can have uh, on this topic? And this is a question. And then uh, I had uh, to honor to of taking part uh, in writing of a book in uh, the memory of Stefano Rodotà. And today I would like to tell you more about this book uh, entitled uh, Il valore della carta dei diritti di internet, the value of uh, the Internet Bill of Rights. It contains uh, uh, insight into Italian uh, Internet Bill uh, Bill's articles adopted by the Italian Parliament uh, some years ago. Each chapter in this book uh, highlights uh, how important it is uh, to regulate uh, our rights uh, on Internet. There are, of course, uh, a large number of legal and social implications, uh, and uh, this will need uh, to be discussed. And this is exactly the reason why we get together every year in meetings like this one uh, or uh, like EGF. We wrote this book uh, in the memory of Stefano Rodotà because uh, he invested uh, so much time and energy in the writing of Internet Bill of Rights, uh, and uh, we know import how important it is uh, to focus on it uh, today. I would like to say thanks uh, to Laura Abba and Stefano Trump Trumpi and to every uh, single person that uh, worked on this book. Uh, Angela Lu, Arturo Di Corinto, Fernanda Faini, Guido Di Polito, Vanessa Ingino, Rita Maria Oli Oliva, Valeria Cantarella, Giulia Cavallari, Ludovica Fanella, Pamela La Farciola, Rosalia Russo, Alessandro Picarone, Federica Ciaguinta and uh, Erika Vaccaro. The book is also available uh, in uh, ebook. We are working uh, on uh, its translation and uh, we hope uh, you can uh, read uh, it uh, soon. Thank you. Thank you, Alessia. Uh, anyone would like to answer the question? that was posed in the beginning, or you might repeat the question? Yeah, uh, the question was, uh, if we see uh, a difference in uh, youth participation in terms of uh, national uh, initiatives and more global. And I'll add, actually, and I'm going to answer a little bit personally, because uh, I know that this should be different from nation to nation. But in terms of Portuguese uh, participation, yes, I clearly see the difference. Uh, first of all, because of how the national initiative operates, and uh, here I'm speaking about the, the full uh, national initiative, uh, in, uh, of IGF initiative in Portugal, because it's really oriented to uh, those big stakeholders that Nika was talking about. And But usually uh, we see this um, as they bringing their own agenda, uh, which is completely different of what we see in uh, uh, of an international level and more global, where I can see that, for instance, those programs of youth participation and youth engagement, and I think the uh, Youth IGF Summit is a great example of it, uh, provide us with a different type of platform. So uh, ideally, what I would like to see is um, uh, trying to bring the same ecosystem that we already see in terms of support to youth participation at the global level, also being effective at the more national one. Thank you, Joao. Anyone else? We have a question from Valeria. Um, and the question is, how do you think which ways are more effective to build cooperation between youth initiatives and national regional initiatives? Anyone would like to take that one? Veronica, do you want to go ahead and uh, clear the head again of our, of our brainstorm about uh, how um, we see breaking silos? 
So I think that, um, of course, um, collaboration starts with dialogue. So reaching out is, is always one of the first things that uh, one, one should do. I personally like uh, that, uh, that youth initiatives uh, are still somehow independent because I think that avoids tokenization and um, which is, as we mentioned in this session, it is a big problem uh, in, in youth uh, representation. So I think that uh, building and fostering its own independent communities is, is great also to have a very fruitful dialogue with both national initiatives and, um, and also to, to have actually uh, messages, real messages to pass also to, to, to the um, global debate. So I, I really think that community building and uh, collaboration in this community, community building is one of the key factors that can actually strengthen the, the, the balance be, between national uh, youth initiatives and also global IGF. Thank you. Uh, we have two hands raised. I would like to unmute uh, Ida now. Please introduce yourself and go ahead. Did I manage to do it? Not really. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me all? Yes. My name is Ida van Praag. I'm an educational designer and I have participated in a lot of teams working with digitalization uh, in the past 12 weeks. And I just see the questions on my screen, how to reach stakeholders. And my first point would be, in the Netherlands, we don't use Facebook anymore. It's for elderly people. So we need to create a platform on uh, Instagram or an, another platform. I think in every country, you should ask those questions to make sure that youth can participate in digitalization of our society. And participation should be first, they need internet access. And second, they need um, digital emotional intelligence. Because if you have a very weird and um, traumatizing experience with the internet, you will not be able to participate for future reference in the internet societies. Sharing should be the fundamental of trust, cyber trust, and cyber resilience. So that's the main question to build a youth IGF in initiative. If you look at the perspective of the youth itself from within, from bottom up, to uh, make sure the youth can express their opinion and their um, community values. That's what I wa wanted to say as an um, answer to the question on the screen. And we uh, started with a workshop for educational needs, which uh, will provide challenges, opportunities, and best practices in Europe if we uh, go to educational needs of youth and information sharing. Teachers will also attend those meetings and they can speak uh, for youth and let their voice be heard. That's my uh, opinion. Thank you. Thank you too. Um, I think uh, next in line is Gustavo. I will try to, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? We can. Okay. Yeah. So Gustavo Paiva. Uh, this year, I am working as vice coordinator for the Brian IGF. I am a member of the Youth Observatory. And uh, I 
brief comment. I'll try to be as brief as possible about the issue of silos. And what I've seen this, this, this topic coming up a few times, not in the youth, but also in other aspects of internet governance, I've seen it. And one of the things that I've, I've held on to a while is that this is more an issue of logistics because of policy. The uh, issue is that if you are in a group, you are working on a policy report for, let's say, AI, it can be months for people in your group to study the topic, to discuss it uh, recursively, and then write it out, edit it, and so on. It is quite a lot of effort. It takes time. It is human effort. It is financial effort. Now, if we had a network of youth groups with whom there was a sentiment of mutual trust, then we could, in a way, co collaboratively rely on rep reports and the production of others. And now here comes the next part. It is about logistics. It's about making sure that your report gets to the right politician. It's about making sure your, let's say, the core work you made for children in high school, middle school, it's making sure it gets there. It is an issue of logistics. What we need is, in a way, a more decentralized structure of smaller local groups, or let's maybe even here an article. So this is what I've been thinking for a while. And last year in the IGF, there was a meeting with Finsurf from Google. And one of the things he was around was that in closed meeting, maybe some of, some of you guys were there. He was talking about what he called um, model unitations. So a model United Nation is usually an university group. So let's say a dozen or a few dozen students and they create simulations of the United Nations. And uh, it's quite a common thing worldwide, hundreds of model United Nations everywhere. Uh, there are four or five in my city alone. And uh, I think what he was thinking when he, when he brought that up is that this is a model that is scalable. It, is, it, it, has, it has scaled worldwide. And if we could, in a way, either learn from these models, that, that is a model which, is, which can be spread out in universities and so on, that can be made to function logistically. It is a very clear cut, a very cold thing. It is not politics, it's logistics. If we get this just level, we can might be seeing youth activism in internet governance taken to the next level. It would take years for this to happen, but this might be a legacy that will last centuries. Who knows? And that's what I've been thinking. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gustavo. And uh, we also have a hand raised by Adele. I'm not sure I pronounced the name correctly, but I will unmute you. Thank you. So this is Adele from Nottingham University, UK. So my question is from Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, you mentioned about a program uh, that you selected uh, like 120 people from around the Europe. And I think it is more on the capacity building side of that. And if that is true, I was wondering that in future, if there's going to be any similar program. And I was hoping that I could also take part in that. And I hope I'm not too late for that. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, so the thing is always with, you know, choosing people for a certain kind of program that is always hard because there's um, usually more interest than there is capacity. Um, you can certainly um, reach out. I mean, just here in this virtual room are different um, organizations and initiatives that do capacity building. Um, so speaking from my own organization, the German Informatics Society this year, we are going to do another global uh, capacity building initiative that is focusing on digital sustainability. So uh, keep on the lookout for that. We will launch a call for uh, participation on that um, in about a month hopefully, and there we can also bring together, hopefully even more people, but at least, you know, a group of 
100 from all over the world, actually from all parts of the world, to collaborate on, on this topic specifically. Uh, also keep the lookout for the activities planned by the, by the host country this year. So the Polish host um, is also planning different activities. They will spread those informations on the, on the IGF website that I've also before posted to the chat. Um, and on Twitter, that's always a good opportunity to you know, see what's going on in the different spheres. But there is a lot to do and there's a lot to be engaged in. You're definitely not too late. We're happy to have you in all those um, initiatives. Thank you so much for your questions and insights. Um, just to have a quick recap of this very interesting discussion, which I, as I said, will take up a whole big another session. Um, so a few things to keep in mind when organizing national youth IGFs. Uh, I think it is the awareness raising component that people do not know uh, that what internet governance is and what all these initiatives are about. It's about logistics, resources, the space, people, your time, energy, etc. And cooperation uh, with the national uh, already established IGFs on regional initiatives, other youth initiatives, exchanging experiences, and so forth. I'm sure our speakers have more tips on this, but as we're running out of time, I will uh, just advise them, uh, I'll advise every one of you to reach out to them if you would like to have more exchange of experiences. And uh, moving on, uh, I think one thing that was mentioned more times during this discussion, like a lot, it was that we need a community. And uh, in order to understand uh, what this community wants, uh, it requires a needs assessment. And uh, I would like to give the floor to Noah Ashraf, uh, who is a steering committee member for YCIG. And she will present the YCIG community questionnaire and its results that we ran just uh, one and a half month ago. So Noah, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for participating in the YCIZ um, session. And um, my name is Noha Ashraf Abdelbeki from Egypt. And I hope you like my background. I just missed the beach. Uh, so let me introduce uh, the YCIG steering committee first. We are, uh, we are representing four UN groups. Uh, Mary is representing the Eastern European group, Eileen, the Latin American Car and Caribbean group. Millie uh, is representing the Asia Pacific group and myself representing the African group. So each year, um, th there are, uh, we organize an, an election to, um, and everyone on our mailing list have the right to vote um, for uh, the next representatives. Um, the YCIG uh, was created 10 years ago, so this year is our 10th anniversary. Uh, it's, it's one of the IGF uh, dynamic coalitions. And we are listed uh, among the youth initiatives. So um, I believe Veronica has already shared the link, so you can find that listed in, this, in the same I guess I have a few minutes. I started participating in the IG spaces um, starting to, uh, 2017 uh, by being selected as an ISOC Youth uh, IGF Fellow. Um, I, uh, we don't have a national IGF uh, in my country, nor a youth uh, IGF. So um, as Joao mentioned, there are many um, online spaces to participate in, and many regional and global spaces to participate in. Um, there are many youth movements as well. So I, online activism is, is meaningful. So you don't have to do um, on-site um, efforts or something, but any efforts you can do is, is meaningful. Our, our participation as youth is meaningful. Uh, so how to join the YCIG? Um, we have our mailing list, an open mailing list. Uh, any person um, aged from 18 to 35 can join from any country. Um, 
referring to what Gustavo was saying, uh, we are a, an open youth network, so um, youth can exchange um, knowledge or experience if they want. They can exchange opportunities as well. Uh, so this year we were uh, discussing, uh, the steering committee was discussing uh, which activity to focus on. And we conducted a questionnaire and shared it on our mailing list. Uh, to, to get to know the community needs. Um, we've received responses from the different regions, from youth from the different regions, uh, from Africa, Latin America, Eastern European, and um, uh, Western uh, Europe as well. And we have given choices uh, um, to which activity to go for. And most of the responses went for webinars around 80%. And the preferred topic, uh, the, the most preferred topic was state protection of privacy, but we had uh, other, sto other topics as well. Uh, environment and technologies um, got 16%, inclusion got 19%, digital inclusion got 16%, and online content got almost 13%. Um, at the YCIG, you have created previously a list of youth experts. Uh, so we have a, a, a list full of um, uh, youth with amazing efforts in different fields. Um, so we reach out to them to, uh, to help us to organize these webinars. And um, I hope if you have any comment of or uh, we are open to collaborate uh, with youth from um, all backgrounds and all regions as well. Um, so uh, please feel free to reach us. We will share the link to uh, join our Facebook group uh, at the end of the, this presentation and how to join the mailing list as well, or to visit our website to know more about our activities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Noah. And um, as it was uh, mentioned and also illustrated on the slides, uh, most of the uh, participants in the survey uh, mentioned that they would like to have more webinars and more mentorship programs, which speaks of the need for further capacity development uh, initiatives. Uh, and of course, the interests uh, really differ uh, based on the region. However, um, most of the participants, even coming from different regions, mentioned uh, cross-cutting uh, topics, um, which means that uh, if um, we start uh, synergizing, if I can put it like that, we can um, make use of the experience that is collected uh, in different regions um, that can benefit the, um, the whole community on a more global level. And um, uh, in addition to the efforts on the national level, uh, we'd like to have a quick look on the ongoing initiatives also on the global level. And I'd like to give the floor to El Noor to represent the youth observatories ongoing initiatives on advancing youth participation in internet governance. Uh, El Noor, you have the floor. Hello, thank you very much for having me here. It's a very nice uh, event and also very nice conversation. Uh, uh, could you please share the slides or should I manage it? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we are starting with the next slide. Uh, I'm, my name is El Nur. Uh, I'm, I'm from Azerbaijan. I'm representing the uh, Internet Society Youth Special Interest Group, uh, in other words, Youth Observatory. I'm working as the regional engagement director uh, for the Eastern European Group. So we took the position actually in uh, 2020, uh, starting from January. Uh, so we are the new board and uh, we are planning new events. So in the past, uh, the youth observatory was mainly focusing on the Latin American and Caribbean region. Uh, and uh, there were two projects mainly uh, in addition to the uh, the use IGF in the Latin America. Uh, there was creating networks project and use Atlas. Uh, and currently we are planning uh, to focus more on uh, all the uh, 
five regions and uh, we are actually promoting the direct use participation in our projects and uh, in, in everything we are proposing. Uh, and in the future, we believe that more use participation is, is the means the better internet governance. Uh, yeah. And so basically from the past events, uh, the use observatory uh, had the creating networks project, which is actually project competition for the youth uh, who are involved in the information communication technologies or for example, working on uh, particular projects related to the internet governance, but who are not uh, in, the, in the ecosystem. What we call ecosystem is like, who are not uh, working to develop uh, policies or to work to, to increase the youth participation. So this uh, project actually uh, had the capacity building part, also the competition, uh, which in which the participants developed projects and uh, executed them. So uh, this was also one of the very successful projects, and it was uh, followed up by the Youth Atlas, which is not a simple map, but a map of the stories of the youth who are uh, in the ecosystem, internet governance ecosystem. So in this use atlas, uh, one can easily find the youth experience, uh, how they came to the uh, internet governance, for example, from the fellowships, from the uh, inter societies uh, youth ambassadors program, what challenges they face, uh, what opportunities they think they can get from the internet governance. And uh, you can find uh, direct interviews and the uh, results of the questionnaires with the youth. And coming to the present projects, uh, we think that uh, the youth participation uh, should be uh, also uh, also appear on the IGF uh, itself, and not only the youth uh, IGF summit, which we highly appreciate. And for this, uh, we, we developed three session pro proposals for the IGF 2020, which is under moderation right now. And in this session proposals, uh, the regional directors work to include the young people, not only as part of the organizing team, but also like direct stakeholders, which means direct speakers on the sessions, or which we highly evaluate uh, to give the floor to the youth in this in such international and multi-stakeholder events. And uh, currently uh, we are promoting the regional engagement, as I mentioned already, uh, one of the challenges the Youth Observatory actually faces is that uh, we have uh, over 2,000 members, actually 2,200 members at least, uh, in, the, in the website, in the portal of the Internet Society as a special interest group. However, uh, not, uh, I wouldn't say that most of the youth are, are actively contributing to the work despite they are uh, getting emails and we have a broad email emailing list, which means uh, to have access to the use all around the world. So we are currently uh, working on this to how to improve the meaningful participation, which uh, this, I really like this word, which is already mentioned in, in the speech of the previous speakers, how to improve this meaningful participation. And we are proposing uh, some uh, leadership exchange and some debates and social media events uh, in collaboration with some uh, national chapters, uh, which is uh, on the idea stage, uh, but some events are, we are already uh, working on the, to, to, uh, to start in the upcoming week, weeks. And we think that uh, this can work to, to uh, when we give floor to the youth uh, members, for example, in the events such as leadership exchange, they would be more motivated. And uh, it is a good thing to also uh, in, to express their ideas uh, in such platforms. Yeah, uh, I just gave you some uh, very brief uh, information about us. And uh, this is the website of the, you can see the website of the Youth Special Interest Group. and. Uh, also, you can be joined the Youth Observatory from the Internet Society uh, portal. 
first you should join the inter society and then the use uh, use special interest group it's it's very easy and please follow us on other social media and thank you very much to the all the organizing team and the youth coalition on internet governance very nice to collaborate with you to speak here and hope to see you in person in the future thank you very much Thank you very much, Elmur. And I would like to thank all the speakers and all the participants that uh, were active um, and or were just listening and uh, took their time to join this session. Uh, so today we heard from various wonderful speakers and also participants on their projects and initiatives on national, regional and international levels. However, at YCIG, we believe that uh, we can achieve much more if we unite our forces and efforts, uh, be that on regional or global levels, as we can greatly benefit from each other's expertise and experience. And um, as we are running out of time, it goes without saying that these topics require more time than just 90 minutes. And uh, everybody uh, is very passionate and interested in taking this to the next level and uh, one thing that uh, came up as i mentioned a lot during the discussion was the need to work together and uh, create a more stronger community and uh, as it was uh, highlighted by different uh, speakers uh, youth has a lot to bring to the table be that initiating uh, one first ever uh, global youth IGF initiative uh, or national youth IGFs uh, or uh, su uh, suggesting solutions for um, such difficult and unprecedented situations such as COVID-19 pandemic, which means that uh, we have a lot of work to do and we can do more together. And as a follow-up to this uh, meeting um, and this session, uh, we at YCIG will send you a follow-up request to um, identify ways of working together and uh, starting with identifying the common goals and also the formats, uh, frameworks and tools that you may envision um, for achieving these common goals together. Uh, this will be one of our, this is one of the main priorities for YCIG for 2020 and beyond. Uh, so I would like to open the floor for any final thoughts or remarks by any participant or um, the speakers. Um, just very short uh, round. Uh, and uh, if if anyone wants to say anything. I do not see any hands. I just received uh, several uh, requests uh, uh, for um, the link for our mailing list. So here it is. And please follow us on social media as well. We share all opportunities on our mailing list and Facebook group and other social media uh, uh, platforms. So uh, please stay in touch and let's keep it an open network uh, to share expertise and please feel free to also share your needs as youth in, in the IG spaces as well. Thank you. Final comment by Adil. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to ask, so the mailing list is regional specific or it is like global in nature? No, no, it's global. Okay, thank you. And, and, and you can share if you have an opportunity or if you heard about an opportunity, whether it's uh, regional or national or even global, you can please feel free to share it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And I would like to give the floor to Elizabeth. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, everyone. Um, much has been said. I don't really see the need to, to top up on that. Um, I just want to point you all to the Eurodic forum. So all of you as registered participants can access the forum and you can continue your exchange there. Um, I have received some questions where we can put certain things, the forum would be the place. Um, and we or Mary, we will also um, ask you questions on to get your feedback um, there. So make sure you have the forum activated in your account and um, please keep exchanging. This is wonderful to see. And I would hereby like to close this session. Thank you again for being here. And we will resume in Studio Berlin at 6.30 Central European Summertime 
with uh, an event by the Dynamic Coalition on the Internet of Things and Core Internet Values. So everyone who is interested, um, come again. Otherwise, I'll see you around and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you to everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.